I've been a blacksmith armorer for over 30 years. I've created weapons for over 200 feature films. This is Man at Arms. Zelda's Master Sword has been one of the most requested blades, so I guess you wore me down on making it for you. I started off developing a pattern for Zelda's sword, traced that down on a piece of 5160 spring steel, and we trimmed that up to match and cut that out on the bandsaw. I've sculpted the hilt out of wax, made an RTV silicone rubber mold, and then poured a urethane pattern into the mold so we have a positive pattern to use into the sand casting. I brought my friend Jay from Dark Prince Studios down in San Diego to do the sand casting. The master sword hilt is too large for me to be able to do with the investment casting, so I need to use sand casting process. In sand casting, as opposed to loss wax investment casting, what we're doing is we're making the cavity for the molten bronze to pour into by using a positive pattern that we make out of resin and press into the sand. The sand is a special kind of sand for uh, foundry work for sand casting called Petrobon. Pretty much everything we do can kill you, but sand casting, if you don't have everything totally dry, you have one speck of water in there, it'll vaporize inside the piece and blow up. Once we have that shape inside the flask and we pour the molten bronze in there, it'll take on the shape of the plastic piece. While Jay is outside melting the bronze to cast it, I'm taking an ingot of bronze and forging it into the shape of the pommel. Bronze is kind of tricky to forge. The melting temperature of bronze is 1800 degrees. The forge is 2000 degrees. If I leave it in there too long, I end up with a puddle of bronze. So technically, uh, you're not supposed to be able to forge it, but uh, I make it work. Most blacksmiths I know don't forge bronze, but uh, I actually enjoy the challenge of working with it. Meanwhile, Jay's outside with the melting furnace, bringing up the bronze to the 1800 degrees melting point and pouring it into the sand mold. So the moment of truth is when he pours the molten bronze into the mold, we'll see if it explodes or not. It didn't explode. He's let it cool down a bit. We've broken up the mold and it came out great. I have William the Elder machining the pommel on the lathe and drilling the hole and threading that so it'll go into the tank. Also, he is taking the vertical milling machine and milling the center groove. It's kind of a modified fuller where the blade drops down about a sixteenth of an inch on either side of the blade. Took the sand cast hilt and I was cleaning that up and then that was also detailed in the jewelry room by Alicia. And then Bill turned the inner grip with uh, grooves on it and turned down the exterior tube when I got that tube, I ground through on both sides so it would show the inner grooves on the handle. And then I'll take the rough milled blade over to the belt grinder, use a 10 inch contact wheel and grind the hollow ground edges. After I'd cleaned up the pommel, I laid out a pattern and then Alicia has cut radial grooves in that. I'm doing the final assembly to make certain everything fits together well prior to doing the heat treating. This is one of the most gratifying parts of making a sword is when you have all the components together even if they're not finished and you can see what the overall finished look will be. I've cut two pyramid shaped pieces of amber colored glass and then polished that on the lapidary machine and that sits right in the center of the hilt on the master sword. I've sanded the pommel down on the satin glow wheel just to smooth it out. The interior grip, we sent that out to an anodizer and had it blackened. The exterior portion, that will be painted blue to match the pommel and the hilt. I put the rough ground blade into the heat treating furnace, uh, brought it up to 1500 degrees and quenched it in the heat treating oil to harden it. really pleased how this one came out. The balance on the sword is phenomenal. This sword looks the part and is totally functional. All the pieces are now assembled and Zelda's master sword is now complete.
If you want to see more awesome weapons made from scratch, be sure to click subscribe. Check out the complete armory of past weapons by clicking here. Big thanks to our friends at SourceFed Nerd. Check them out and be sure to say Tony sent you. As always, tell me what weapon you'd lose your rupees over and maybe I'll build it for you in an upcoming episode.